Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're going to be going over our fire suppression system, showing you what goes on behind the scenes here at Custodian. So we're going to be showing you the gas, the fire panels, our Vesta system, and also we're going to cover what we do in the event of a fire. Some of you might have been wondering why we've been away for a while. Now, I can't necessarily say why, but I can tell you've been working on some big things and getting more clients into the data centre. So stay tuned for more on that later. So we turned around a little bit and we're now in front of one of our fire panels for data floor 4. We've got more than one fire panel that serves the data floors. We've chosen this one because it's got some things going on and um, it's the best one to show you. So down here we have gas release for the different pods and things that we have going on in the data centre and then we actually have a, a control panel here that shows you what is going on um, on the fire panel. There are a few alarms here and Ash is going to kindly explain what's going on with those. I am indeed. So as you can see we've got an isolation tag on this panel uh, and that's purely because certain places are isolated. We're actually commissioning new fire fire management systems. So the reason you're seeing the flashing fault light on the top panel but not on any of these panels is because this is only part of it. That fault is actually coming from one of the other panels in the same data floor James was explaining. So this is a known fault. It's not a fault in the way that it's not working. It's just installed and waiting to be commissioned and set up to work with this panel. So as soon as that's done, all the alarms will clear and will then be commissioned, handed over for use, and we can actually put racks in there, as well as equipment. So guys, for those of you that are regulars to the channel, you recognize this setup, we're back in DF1. The reason for that is I want to go through what happens to all of the cooling systems when the fire alarm goes off. So, First things first, when there's a fire, Vesta detects it, which you're going to be shown shortly. Um, when Vesta detects it, it tells our fire systems. At that point, all of the cooling systems go into a fire mode, which effectively closes all of the external dampers of these air handlers. Why does it do that? Because we need to take all the air out of the room and we need to fill it with gas, which James is going to show you as well. At that point, we need to make sure that the room is sealed. When the room is sealed, that is when it truly works. So we seal the room by closing the outside dampers. We turn the chillers on to get the temperature of the air really low in order to maintain the room. And then the gas fills the room, brings the oxygen down to non-combustible levels, fire goes out, and hopefully everything is good after that. So when you see these fully open, it doesn't always mean there's a fire. We could just be recirculating the air or mixing it with outside air. But in the event of a fire, externals close, internals open, chillers come on. We pump gas into the room so that the only air in the room is the, the air that is now gas. So, yeah, I guess that's it. James is going to show you the gas bottles in one of our bottle stores. And then it will give you a bit of an insight as to what the gas is, what it contains, how it works and how it's actually dispensed. Cool. So, we have made it into the gas bottle room. There's lots of gas bottles behind me and in front of me. And what you see here, uh, lots of bottles joined up onto a common pipe, which then heads into the DC. And Ash is going to talk about how the pipe and the release into the DC is going to work later on. But in here, what you've got to do is have enough bottles to fill the whole room of gas, otherwise you don't put the fire out. So, though it looks like there's a lot of bottles here, compared to the size of the room, you think about how much pressure is inside each one of these bottles themselves. And when they release, they release a lot of pressure down. So it all sits on top, on top of concrete to be able to get the gas out into the data center. All of the pipes uh, that feed the gas into the DC are all painted red, so you know exactly what they are and then there are lots of nozzles dotted about them as well. You can see each gas bottle has its own pressure gauge on it and they are checked regularly and then also serviced as well by our team that actually do the bottles for us. And the bottles are a combination of gases that won't actually kill you, it just reduces the amount of oxygen in the room so that a fire can't actually take hold. 
Um, you wouldn't want to be inside because the pressure in the room drastically changes, uh, so you do need to get out. But there are alarms and things to tell you before the gas actually releases. So this is the VESDA unit, which is a laser air analysis device. It samples the air every minute and makes sure that there's no weird particulates such as smoke or anything like that. We also have gas nozzles which are responsible for releasing the gas into the room in the event of a fire and this is what we discussed earlier and which James has talked about in the gas bottle store. We also have a duct sensor which is kind of like your traditional smoke head but it also is an optical sensor as well so it actually does an optical similar to the Vesta. So guys thank you for joining us on a tour of our fire suppression systems. Hopefully we've shown you something that a lot of other facilities don't do. Maybe you've learned something new or you're going to go and do some digging into how it all works, the Argonite and stuff like that. So we've got some videos in the pipeline ready to be filmed. We've got an awesome schedule of works coming up and we want to see you in the next video. So hit that subscribe button, like the video, share it with your friends and stay tuned. We'll be back soon.